MGS logo. Little Steve Vai. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, Jason Jones. I didn't hear what you said, Marty. What was that? <laughs> <laughs> hey, everybody. Welcome to the farce that is the uh, Halo 2 developer's commentary. Uh, I'm Jason <laughs> Jones. I'm here with Joe Staten, director of cinematics, and Marty O'Donnell. Uh, what, did, what did Marty do, Joe? Um, I, I know he wrote something. <laughs> the music. The music. Uh, Some of the music. <laughs> and uh, we're going to talk about our favorite... Uh, our favorite game that we've ever developed, Halo 2. <laughs> and here... Only one ah, oh, yes. Mellifluous tones. Are you sure? Some new actors. Wow. Hold it. A pillar of autumn. David Keith. Why was it not Keith David, yes. Keith David, David Keith. Now, if you were watching before the Halo 1 stuff, it's just amazing the, uh, the instant the increase in graphic fidelity between these two things. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. Actual crossfades in Halo 2, I have to say. Crossfades were... Did you, did you make it so things don't freeze anymore, Joe? Well, yes, this is what's known as the director's, director's cut. remastering of the Halo 2 cinematics. Yeah. Because if, if you actually played Halo 2, you might have noticed that there were some, some graphic glitches, uh, some popping textures some depth of field that wasn't quite in there. So what I thought I would do, you know, and, and then I know you audio guys went back and did a little bit too, is really go and create the Wait. cinematics the way that we the way that we really wanted them to, to look. But it's all still an engine, all still playing back from the engine. I saw you in After Effects at least once. <laughs> <laughs> this is called the developer diary, not the cheater's confessional. <laughs> the, the council demands it. You are one of our most treasured instruments. Long have you led your fleet with honor and esteem. I love it. Truth. He's, uh, wait, here comes a good line. Uh, here comes. Nay, it was heresy. <laughs> Bob O'Donnell, ladies and gentlemen. Marty's dad. Yes. Pretty much Cameo he came into every, yes. every single I game. Will continue my campaign also known as the Surly Dwarf from Myth. Mm -hmm. And he was the prophet of denial. No, what are we calling him? Prophet of something. <laughs> yeah, well, we did we do that. Good stuff. And the one of the bugs that I could never fix in Halo 2, and I still couldn't fix it right there. Bang! Arbiter's helmet pops Us. every single time, and I could never figure that out. Even in After Effects? Even at A. Oh. <laughs> That's it, it. I'm going back and fixing it. It is nice to see all these cinematics without any popping at all. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, so what? So what was that all about, Jones? The the <laughs> popping that we that we ship with Cairo. I was just in Cairo last last <laughs> month. <laughs> uh, we guess we guess code. You know how but I mean, it was a hardware problem sign. too, right? It was because we uh, it's because we landed the plane in like an eighty nine degree power dive <laughs> onto fire. Like yeah. <laughs> Exactly. I guess it was all obsolete anyway. Your new suit's a Mark VI. But I mean, I remember, I remember that distinctly just being being heartbreaking for everybody on the team when you know when we realized it was just it was just too late. It wasn't that time to put that to put that polish on the game. And that was that was pretty heartbreaking for everybody. Yeah, that was pretty. That was pretty Here we go. Tell me how you made it back home in one piece. <laughs> how did you? <laughs> Classified. Classified. That's good writing. Well, you Thank you. Oh wait. <laughs> there's a there's a grand tradition well, in Halo games <laughs> of never really explaining <laughs> how we get from one to the other. <laughs> Almost, but not really. Like we hadn't actually planned to make the next one. <laughs> what? I mean, we always do. I'm just saying it's like we hadn't really planned it. I remember when we were doing the Cortana. Uh, letters yes. years ago mm. where we had the entire plan from the beginning of the Cortana letters to the end of the trilogy. The end remember of that whole three. story arc, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. I think we might have lost that plan. <laughs> okay, let's look at it. Marty, that's some nice martial stuff. All the arm pumping repeat animations. He is extremely excited to see the Master Chief. <laughs> Now, there was no addition of any post effects in this scene. I don't remember seeing flashes like that in the game. What happened here? There were flashes in the game. But it, one of the things that we had to cut, unfortunately, from the final version was a lot of the effects work. So 
all the flags were in there, all the scripting was in there, but we just couldn't. We you just couldn't brought make it happen. Back. Okay, that's good for historical for record. historical historical purposes. Little grunt standing on top of the thing, <laughs> extremely happy bystander. <laughs> That's my favorite line. Heretic <laughs> in this entire cutscene. <laughs> the brutes. The arbiter, he takes his punishment like a man. Look at him. Drawn quite a crowd. If they came to hear me, good old Tartarus. They will be disappointed. Are you sure? Boy, these voices. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Put a little depth of field in. Sure, why not? <clears throat> Ouch. I mean, one of the challenging things, I mean, between, I mean, you see how quickly we're, the timing of this hasn't changed, but swapping back and forth between these environments, I mean, all, all Halo cinematics are in real time, right? So you got to be running the stuff and loading textures and all that sort of thing, and we just couldn't quite, we couldn't quite uh, do it. And the white flashes that you see in the, in the, in the game are actually, actually hiding some stuff behind the scenes. So, yeah, went back, took out some of the white flashes. Thank you. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh yeah. A little comedy. Comedy. <laughs> and that was cool because we had two voices saying something at the same exact time, which was not easy for us to do. It was in the cinematics. That's true. See, the grunt wasn't quite tall enough. He had to stand on the other guy's shoulder. Ah, uh, got it. <laughs> there was an idea at one point to have little, uh, little uh, engineers, the character that we never put in the Halo game, a sort of floating gas bag character, float by on Legendary with a little ballpark tray of wieners and, uh, and, and, uh, and caramel corn and cotton candy. Next time we'll leave a month for the uh, Easter eggs. Yeah, we really should. <laughs> well, hey, Jason, how did the skulls there she come in at the end? The only time that she blinked ever. Did the skulls come in at the, like, at the last minute or were you always planning on doing skulls? It actually came in after the last minute. <laughs> <laughs> I forget who, who modeled this, but I didn't quite realize how big and fiery that effect was going to be. <laughs> but I love how the Arbiter sits here and takes that huge he burning is, he can take <laughs> thing. It, He's tough. The Arbiter is tough. Ruptures directly off our battle cluster. Show me. Now, Covenant capital Cortana looks slightly different than she did in Halo 1. What happened there? Cortana changes her changes her appearance. A girl's got to stay. Ron stay fashion forward. Link up with the fleet. Yes, sir. You have the Mac gun, Cortana. As soon as they come in range. Oh, he almost said Cortana. <laughs> Something's not right. Ooh. The fleet that destroyed Reach was 50 times this. What's on the back of his head? Well, just like Captain Keys in the yes. first game. Yes. He too has a neural interlace. Ah. Just in case someone needs to punch him in the head and take his coat. <laughs> yes, sir. I need a weapon. I need a weapon. Once again, again, great line. Again, if you did wa the, watch the first part of the Halo 1 cinematics, there were no playback animations and very little AI work in, in the Halo 2 cinematics. It was almost entirely, well, 99%, I'd say, um, oh. custom animated, keyframe animated, which was a big change, which was a big change for us from Halo 1 to Halo 2. Hey, you know, it looks like the gameplay section of this particular sequence is edited and scored and all sorts of things are happening. What's going on here? Marty. Yeah, it's all right. I think what we were trying to achieve was a more full representation of the game. Okay. All right. <laughs> Which meant more work for me. <laughs> hey, check it out. The molt has already driven up before. The, the Aussie. What is your status? Over. Oh, here's the scene that no one actually ever saw. That's why we're showing you right now. This is bad. Well, it's a real challenge in, in, in Halo games because we do have this cinematic storytelling. We put a lot of our storytelling in the cinematics to get people to pay attention to anything except a grunt. Right. <laughs> Looks like there were more ships in the sky than I remember. <laughs> Particles was one of those things that was a, was a real challenge for, for um, oh, put a lot of them on screen. stuck grunt. I was almost on board when they showed up. Don't worry, ma'am. Wow. Miranda's little hat. This is like, this is cut like an MTV thing. What? This is quick. I can hardly follow oh, it. Oh, just let it go. <laughs> I remember hearing you guys bicker about this. <laughs> Boom! Oh, see? Super the carrier. The carrier that no one ever sees. There it is. Beautiful. I like I it. think no oh. one ever saw it, 
Marty? Mm -hmm. Because you never attached a sound to it. <laughs> That's because I never saw it. <laughs> Inside your head now. Now. Oh, the pickle. pickle. Jason, oh do you remember why we put the Covenant space pickle in, in Halo 2? Uh, okay, Jason, explain this I one. just remember you were supposed to hitch you it to the back of the know. Jeep and drive it. <laughs> Right, I forgot about that. You're supposed to drive it all the way across the ship. That would have been awesome. Negative that would have been awesome. The, the Warthog, the space, the original space station ride, it was supposed to be a zero G training facility where there was a big open environment with warthogs and all that sort of stuff, right? And you were supposed to put the put the bomb in the back of a little trailer, right, that attached the warthog, and then drive it through the human to the human space station. That would have been fun. That would have been good time. That would have been awesome. But the reason why we have the bomb... I know it, what you're thinking. If, Boy, that looks fast. Well, that, so, it, because the for original close, plan was to I have a level crazy. after this one. Oh, yeah. Called Covenant Ship. Covenant Ship. And the Master Chief, much like he did in that, the, the announcement trailer for Halo 2, there was, no, there was no bomb. He would just man up, pop the airlock, bam, land on the Covenant Ship, tear it apart from the inside. Right. But instead, you did probably one of the most amazingly ridiculous cutscenes in the history of games. Well, I figure if you're gonna cut a level, this is the way to cut it. I won't. By creating just as much work. Yeah. <laughs> Based on this cinematic alone. No, 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 you just add a giant Covenant space pickle. Gunk. So somehow, the airlock yeah. depressurization shoots the pickle yep. perfectly towards the Covenant ship. That's right. The Chief's good. <laughs> and then who exactly, while he's, fl fl he's floating through the air, the, who, the who blasts this open for him? The, the bombers come in, don't you see? It's all, see, here they come. Is somebody <laughs> telling them to do that? Like Cortana, maybe? Let's just say that Cortana, okay. she talks to other people okay. while you're doing stuff. And the music is too loud for us to hear that, which That's is right. good. I okay. think the music is definitely too loud. <laughs> Wow, the Covenant ship level was going to be awesome. <laughs> you were going to go in there and eventually steal a wraith and end wow. up shelling like the power core of the Covenant ship. That's right. And it was one of the missions where Miranda played a big part too. Here, here's what I love. Yeah. His, his legs themselves propel him enough out of here. And then he knew that the explosion would then also shoot him in exactly the right direction. It's almost like Marty thinks we're not making epic sci-fi space opera. <laughs> For a brick, he flew pretty good. And that's it. Getting Comedy back. always yeah. distracts. That's good. The spike to the but yeah, Miranda. I mean, unfortunately, some of, she her, she really had her big introduction in the in the Covenant ship level. <laughs> yeah. Where she was inside the ship, you know, running around with with uh, her ODSTs for a little bit too. Oh yeah. Oh, no. uh, and we most definitely regret the core just blew up our raggedy ass. Now, these two Ooh, cinematics in a row, it's interesting. They they both represent two different E uh, the the announcement trailer for Halo 2 was sort of what we just did and now this is very similar to the E3 trailer. Right? Interesting. And we got it in the game anyway, yeah. Some of the same elements. But, I mean, the one thing we didn't have in the uh, E3 trailer, right, was the huge giant Covenant walking tank. That's right. Or the pickle. Or the pickle, that's true. I remember how many times that guy missed his gun with that clip. <laughs> <laughs> little, sink, little sink problem. That was like three months. Of... Whoa. Here it comes. Oh, there it is. What is that? Ladies and gentlemen, this should have been a surprise to all the fans. Giant Covenant walking tank. A Halo 1 idea executed in Halo 2. Hey. It's good stuff. Wake up. And Jen, you remember that in the yes. recording studio? Yes. We say, hey, Jen, Jen, can you just, and she grabbed the lamp that she was, that was uh, lighting up her script and just tuk, 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 gave it a little tap. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Marty, you're a huge jerk. Killing that poor little guy. Brunt. Jones, walk us through this encounter. If they didn't know we're here before. There's some bad guys, you, you shoot them. It's really fun. <laughs> <laughs> the best part is the snipers. The big argument about whether the sniper should kill you in one shot or not on Legendary. Bugger, over the rooftops. Little buggers. Hey, you know what you should be able to do? You should be able to uh, hit the B button and take that turret off its stand. That would be cool. <laughs> awesome. Meet you there. Over. Copy that. Someone get a satchel on 
And why do we call them drones, not buggers? Oh, that's right, because bugger means something else in different places around the world. We're, we're, our guys are still calling them buggers. It's about 50-50. Oh, well, there's the always hunters? that point in the Halo game, right, where you got to introduce the hunters. And they have that special sweet spot in the back. Mm -hmm. It's their area. <laughs> Their special area. I don't like to be shot in their area. Oh, look at that. That was nice. A little lip sync. There was a great deal of combat dialogue in Halo 2, Marty. You might not remember this. Yes, 20,000 lines. I do remember it. <laughs> oh my gosh, Tyson and I worked on oh. Oh, level yeah. so long. Snipers are like bacon. They make anything better. Mm-hmm. Wait, even on Legendary when they shoot you with one shot? Yep. <laughs> and and the Covenant, the Elite Landing Pods was one of those things that we just didn't, which was so cool in that trailer, where we didn't quite have time to, to um, well, put them everywhere if, if I had my druthers. Have them slamming down all around you. Did you get them slamming in here? You That's should. Awesome. Yep. Oh, you didn't. I'm sorry, I was watching the rocket launcher blow up the ghost. I didn't hear anything you guys said. <laughs> yes, because that was cool. Big jerk. Also, something nobody saw. I don't think they expected us to be here. Not you and me. All of us. Well, it's really hard to get people to look at the giant hole in the ceiling when you put them in a vehicle that's moving a thousand miles per hour and enemies in front of them. Not impossible. <laughs> oh wow! We blew through that tunnel fast. That was a longish tunnel. <laughs> Mr. David Cross, ladies and gentlemen. Right through us. Michelle Rodriguez. Mm -hmm. Cal rockets didn't do a thing. Great voice. Come on, David. Oh, here comes Scully. Of course. Scully's always bringing you good stuff. Look at it. Oh, was there some depth of field I'm not remembering? Yeah, you gotta put it back in. <laughs> Wasted, Sarge. And we will be too, sir, if we don't get the hell out of here. You hit Marine. N no, sir. Then listen up. That's David Cross acting. That's amazing. Well, one of the things that you know, we always do in a Halo game is uh, have a little bit of legendary, legendary on different difficulty levels. If you play on different difficulty levels, yes, they'll get something a little bit, a little bit different, a little bit of different dialogue. So if someone's listening to this this commentary and hasn't doesn't know that yet, this is one of those cinematics. If you start this level on different difficulty levels, Johnson he says different things. Oh wait, here we go. I know what the ladies like. <laughs> now, you have been criticized for that line, Joe. I don't know if you realize that. I, I think have. it's one of the best lines ever. But there are some people who think it's a little on the sort of cheesy side. When have I ever written a cheesy line <laughs> of dialogue? I don't know. I, I wouldn't call it cheesy at all. I think that line's brilliant. You I know, think I think that line, line really, Marty? Yes? I think what it is is it, it's, it's really one of those really truthful lines that I really channeled from personal experience. <laughs> <laughs> My, my wife's not listening to this. Uh. <laughs> Did you get any uh, Laura Prep on? Now, at one point, that part of the level was filled with water, wasn't it? Mm, that's true. There was some water, yeah. At least you one of those there. areas. <laughs> Jones and his anti-water ways. You used to like water so much, man. In Marathon, what happened? Yeah, water's in one spot in the game, like 20 square feet of water, and it doesn't work in the last two weeks. <laughs> It's one of the things that doesn't get fixed. Sadly, sadly enough. Man, I don't even want to think about all the fun bugs that was involved with with this. All the all the months where you got tossed off, fell through. But a really fun fight. So in Halo 2, we really, really enjoyed the moving giant pieces of geometry. Yeah, what were they called, John? <laughs> moving BSPs? Moving BSPs. You and your mad moving BSP plans. That is no, wait a good minute. looking effects work. <laughs> How exactly? And you oh. shot the biggest, glowiest thing you could find. Okay. <laughs> I understand now. <laughs> you mothers. Extract the chief and return to an amber crime. Little texture camera. Sir, the mm. prophet is bugging out. Request permission to engage. Negative, Commander. Probably, I mean, I think, pound for pound, one of the most, it, it seems pretty simple, but one of the more complex cinematics in the game, just in terms of 
switching from little pieces of the world where the characters are with their own special lighting and then going to these big environments outside and then having all these texture cameras. Um, this was definitely the cinematic that pushed, that pushed the engine the hardest. Really awesome camera work. Really great storyboards by Mr. Lee Wilson and some really great uh, roughed out stuff by C.J. Cowan. But yeah, it was it was a really a really um, kaboom a really ambitious cinematic that that uh, was probably a little bit more a little bit more ambitious than we could pull off. It looks like we pulled it off here, Mr. Steve Scott. And I remember Steve. I remember that. I effect. couldn't. I could not for the life of me get that cine that that effect to move move properly down the street. That one that kept coming down the street. Right. And I remember I finally got it working. And I mean, you know me, I decided I can make it a little bit better and I totally screwed it up. <laughs> and I had to go back to Steve the next day and say, Steve, uh, remember that thing that you placed for me that you've done it about eight times? And God bless him, Steve Scott <laughs> smiled and fixed it, but oh man, I felt bad about that. <laughs> and you, Jones, who wanted to cut this part of the cinematic, admittedly, this is a pretty long cinematic. <laughs> yeah, it's true. I did. Yeah, you're right. I remember complaining about this one. <laughs> Admittedly, I was wedded to the teat line, the but teat. I think it's true that this is this is really Tartarus's Tartarus's introduction. Otherwise, he becomes um, yeah, just another gray-haired brute. Just another gray-haired brute. Kevin Michael Richardson was Tartarus. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Marty, with your with your backwards satanic play the record backwards speaking here which you guys had no idea actually there was real words to it and it screwed everybody up thinking there's some secret message going on mm -hmm. that's funny what's the secret message i i still didn't know that there were real world <laughs> words there <laughs> oh jason truth's go-to gesture nice little, little finger that's right should have been in a sound effect on that Elites without their armor on, Ooh. They're, they got swimmer's bodies. Yes, they're sort of leathery. Ultimately, the terms of your execution are up to me. Mr. John, Johnny Buckets. John Buckets with some really great cinematic animation in this scene. Mausoleum of the Arbiter. The Arbiter. See, it seems to me we had to, to re-record that line. <laughs> yeah. This is... This is this is the part in the game, I think, where people start to go, why the hell are we spending so much time with this Arbiter guy? Well, most people are like, yeah, when do we get to be Master Chief again? What is all this backstory, right. exposition stuff? Right. I don't really, I'm not paying attention right now. Yeah. Halo something, this dude, he's and there's disgraced. Definitely, there's definitely... <laughs> the people who pressed the A button and skipped ahead were probably pretty surprised. <laughs> <laughs> Now, do you remember, Jason, when we were talking about making the heretics all hunters? Yeah. No. What? Yeah, there was a time in Halo 2 where the plan was... All hunters. Well, the heretic leader would be a hunter. Oh. And most of the heretics that you fought in the, in the, um, the next level was a, were all hunters. And don't forget that early on in Halo 2 days where you went to go attack the heretics was actually the moon near the first Halo ring, the old infamous Alpha Moon environment. Yeah, right. oh. And that Alpha Moon environment, which you know became Gas Giant, where they killed the heretic leader, or a gas mine, um, I think some of that geometry actually got used again, I mean, completely tweaked, but for uh, the Sentinel Wall level, right? And that yeah, same sort right. of design. Mm -hmm. But yeah, originally in Halo 2, you were supposed to go as the, as the Arbiter uh, to the the moon that you saw in the first Halo game, and that's where the, the heretics had holed up. And they were going to be hunters. God damn, that sounds cool. <laughs> I'm trying to listen to the cinematic. Yeah. Well, you can't just sit and be mesmerized in the developer commentary section. <laughs> Miguel Ferrer is the heretic, which is very cool. One of the few times in the game where, um, where we had these, were able to afford some great Dynamic, Shh. dynamic lights that... Here he goes. What would you have your arbiter do? How in the world does his lips make those noises? It like sounds <laughs> like just a normal guy talking, but his <laughs> lips are like, what is that? Oh, hi, we Charity. The covenant, we took an oath. To our Robert Davi, Spec Ops Commander. 
blood of our fathers, on the blood of our sons. Spec Ops Commander? He's a special, special Operations Commander of the Covenant. That's right. Spec Ops Commander. And he comes from Brooklyn or something, which is really amazing. <laughs> ah, turn on that methane. That's right. <laughs> and I remember Jay. I mean, the last Lord, minute. The last minute, one of the last Foley things that went in. Mm. But worth it, Marty. Absolutely. Worth every Had to have it in there. That's right. No, Marty, I gotta say, uh, uh, I, I definitely have my favorite piece of music in the game. This piece, second made. favorite. Cool. You are the arbiter, the will of the prophets, but these are my elites. Oh, Their see? lives matter to me, yours does not. You're right. If someone, hit, if someone hit the A button <laughs> at any time in the cinematic, well, in about 15 seconds, they're for a really big this, surprise. This sequence of cinematics is what, 25, 30 minutes long? What is it? Oh, come now. <laughs> Let me put it this way, it's not quite as long as the grave mind section. <laughs> but we'll get to the reason why oh, that's yes. a little bit longer than go. it should be. Why is that cable a different color? It's almost like it's going to get detached later. <laughs> but, but, this is good. This is all good. And see, people are but, like, okay, I'm not really paying attention, but eventually I'm going to be the Master Chief because I want to be the uh, get back to shooting those Covenant No, what's what? going on? What? <laughs> Wait you a know, minute. As much as as much as I think we all have mixed feelings about the arbiter decision. Yes. And we absolutely didn't execute on it in the you know the the way that we really wanted to. But Halo Two, because we made this choice, I mean, all of a sudden just blew the doors open on the Covenant in this interesting way that now in Halo Three, I think we can we can go back to the Master Chief, that singular perspective, and. We, just as people making the game, know so much more about that other side of the story. We can create something that's richer, and I think people who played Halo 2, you know, it's kind of this, we took the knock, we made the investment, and then I think we're a lot, a lot better off for it. At least that's what I, I, I love like this line. That's I, why I get to sleep at night. Yes, I, uh, Joe, I think you're absolutely right. This is what I love, though. Your armor system's not as new as ours, and we're going to, like, just completely jip you out of the invisibility in about like 10 seconds. Oh, yeah, that worked yeah, out great. Yeah, game designer. What was, what was fun about that? Well, on Legendary, it was even less than 10 seconds. <laughs> was it really? I was like, basically didn't even do anything. <laughs> <laughs> now, I mean, I remember we went around and around in terms of, because here you are as an elite, right, fighting other elites and other, uh, and other grunts. Basically, at this point, a, a lot of people are going, I don't know who to shoot or why, but I'm shooting everything that moves. Well, this is why having the, the, um, the, the heretics be hunters would have been genius. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But I remember the conversation, I think I had it with you and Jamie, where I said, Hunter heretics! And you and Jamie looked at me and thought, <laughs> for some reason, that a whole level populated by hunters wouldn't be very much fun. I don't know why. <laughs> yeah, that's true. You'd have a lot of areas to aim at. Hey, what's the, what kind of ship is that there, Joe? The that, middle. my friend, is a Seraph fighter. Mm. It is a cinematic model, rarely seen. But, funny thing, the Seraph fighter is actually the old, 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 old Halo Covenant tank, right? That Shikai built. Yeah. That ship that you just saw, that sort of round, uh, almost, what do you call it, cuttlefish You'll, you'll see it at thing, the end of the level. Used to be a Covenant tank back in the day. And maybe again. <laughs> I worked. Uh, I worked with your guys on the sound for the Covenant carbine and the Covenant sniper rifle for so long, Marty. They got so sick of me. I remember that. <laughs> but what, what? What did you not like about the? Oh, very tricky. I just. I don't know. It's. It's weird. It's weapon sounds. They. Like. They don't work. They don't work. They don't work. They don't work. And then you find something that works, and mm -hmm. it's kind of hard to. Uh... <laughs> did I ever come complain about this music, Marty? <laughs> This is Incubus. <laughs> I think you did. I think you complained about every piece from somebody else. So, which actually kind of makes me feel good, even though. There you go. One of the things. Yeah, we, we this is one of the things we experimented with with some like music from some outside groups, Incubus and Breaking Benjamin, which I personally thought was pretty cool. There were some people like Jason who were not as excited about it. Well, we sort of across the board in Halo. To me, we definitely went out. We got you know whether it was Robert Davi or. Yeah. Michelle Rodriguez, uh, people, um, more known people to do the voices as well. And I, I think that, that turned out great. See, right there, he's sniffing with his nose. Mm -hmm. You see? Because, mm -hmm. oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at him. 
Oh no, not again. Oh, what a jerk, what a huge jerk! Oh, Miguel Ferrer. Yes. Yes. I'm flattered. In a world where <laughs> your enemies and allies look the same. Using a holodrome. This is good. The, is. the Robert Dobby on Miguel Ferrer macho Ooh, who's stare got the down. Voice. The flood is upon us. And then Keith David. I mean, he's, come on, these voices. It's good. Good stuff. Infection forms, carrier forms, most brilliant idea ever. <laughs> Actually, originally, I think it was the carrier forms just blew up, and then somebody had the idea they should blow up and spit out infection forms. Whose idea was that? That was the birth of genius. I don't remember. Oh. I think that was my idea. Now that I'm. I <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That clearly was a sound decision. That was, I guess, probably the second time, third time you saved Halo yeah, 1 and 2. Yeah, there you go. Thank you. Uh, oh. This will save me from the storm, but you will be consumed. Make Arbiter angry. Boom. Bunk. Arbiter, where yes. is now, what are those elites walking on over there? Just a little bit of thin air, it's fine. I remember the uh, the day that the, the dip in the floor got cut. We didn't have quite have time to... I mean, the dip in the floor was made. You know, it's quite amazing have time to the things animation. you still see, because I've never seen these half of yeah, these. Each one of these bugs yeah. is burned into my brain, Artie. <laughs> You're so obsessed about the bug that you missed the Arbiter's best line of the entire game. <laughs> the cable. I'm going to cut it. Yes. I think a certain Mr. Jason Jones wrote that line, <laughs> if I'm not mistaken. You know, in, 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 when, you're, when you're sitting down with Jones, for people that are listening to this, and you're about to, you know, work on the story, usually what Jones does is he comes to you at the beginning of a game. And with a line that has and, to be With it. like two lines. <laughs> and one of the, one, the, the handful of lines that you came to me at the beginning of Halo 2 and said, I got, you know, here, here here's, here's the story of Halo 2. Oh, okay, Jason, what's the story of Halo 2? The story of Halo 2 is... The cable, I'm going to cut it, <laughs> and I'm a monument to all, all your sins. sins. Bam, done. That's the story. <laughs> oh, okay, that that sounds really cool. Hey, um, who said yeah. who says those things? <laughs> I don't know. You make it up. Oh, and the other one was in Space Station, um, Master Chief looking out, Earth burning below. Only blood will pay for this. Those were the three lines that Jason yeah. came to the beginning of Halo Two. Only blood. Only blood will pay for this. The cable, I'm going to, to cut line? it. Bam! Monument to all your sins. But we didn't do the only blood will Everything pay for Everything else wrote itself. Turn, heretic. <laughs> Arbiter. I would so rather why did we cut the uh, only blood will pay for this line? Well, it was I too cool. To <laughs> well, I think, I think we cut the whole mission. Yeah, yeah. that ended up on the same graveyard as... Um, uh, well, wait, before I tell that story... There was this, uh, the worst bug the in Halo 2, for me, for Joe, <laughs> was that if you look, Sparks light in the game, not, not the cinematics here, it's supposed to light when he talks, but it's reversed. So in the game, when he talks, it goes dim. So in every single cinematic, poor Spark in the game actually doesn't really and, talk. And ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> when Joe says that's the worst bug in the game, and it's a bug that no one in the world has ever noticed, it <laughs> just shows you the kind of compulsive, crazy person he is. Well, I think at the end of the day, not to get too weepy on Oprah's couch, but, weepy. <laughs> but the worst thing about Halo 2 for me was that in Halo 1, it was all, look, I could go in, I could script it with AI, I could do playbacks, and I could fix stuff, right? But in Halo 2, we definitely went to the system where it was a lot of custom animation, really long lead times, and you just, you sure, something like the monitor, if you caught it, you could fix, but it was really hard to go back and fix, fix simple things in, um, in Halo 2 cinematics, unfortunately. But the thing I was going to mention before, and I'm not letting you off the hook, is remember what Miranda was going to do to the Master Chief. Would you like to tell the children what Miranda was going to do? Yeah, should we wait until the until the right moment? I think it's still a few missions from now. But I think I think the phrase uh, arc welding a thermonuclear bomb to his armor comes to mind. That's right. Miranda was going to strap a bomb to the chief's back after signing up. Gonna be awesome. A deal with the devil with the prophets. And why was she going to do that? Why? Why didn't you? Because do that? she was still, mad about she was Captain still, Keys, still her father's zero. death. Punched her dad in the face. Do it and find out where we are. You guys just imagine the heretic who just talked through his entire piece. I know. That's how we feel about the heretic. Wait, 
Wait for it. Cigar what spit take. Am I looking at? Coming up. That is another halo. <gasps> How many people do you think were shocked by that? <laughs> Say what? <laughs> another halo? Johnson looks shocked. <laughs> That's why it's called Halo 2. Now, very few people notice, right here, we're hearing a new monk melody that represents the monks of Halo 2 instead of the monks of Halo 1. Very few people know that. Wait, you were getting mad at me because I noticed Spark's eyeball not blinking the right way? I'm just saying, this is a subtle thing. I didn't obsess about it. Here we go. Again, Halo 2, this is the mother of all exposition scenes. This is the big... And isn't it funny that it's another member of the Keys family yes. <laughs> that has given it to you? They call it Halo 2. Understood. Over the target in five. Jay, Jay Wineland's cameo appearance. Look at how big that ring is. ODST pods, good stuff. That's cool. Oh, what was the awesome thing that was going to happen here? Oh yeah, the pods were going to go by the pelicans on the way down or something like that. There was something I was completely excited for and I just never came to terms with. <laughs> well, what we were going to do, <laughs> what we were going to do there is the, it was going to be first person, right? Just Find like the, the um, silent cartographer intro. We were going to put little windows in the ODST pod and you were going to be sitting, we would, we would start with the pelicans flying past you. Right, then we would snap to first person and you'd be able to watch them get blown, blown in the sky as you were heading down. Oh no, that was it, right. It was the pelicans were coming down, you went past them, right. and that and you knew you had to take out these guns yes. before the pelicans got close enough to get shot down. You're right, that's right. And then there was some pressure of time and frame rate and <laughs> la 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 la. <laughs> Welcome to making A lack games. of will, really. <laughs> yeah, right. Neutralize those turrets. Oh, ODSTs. The Aussie, he survives. He's Absolutely. a he's a survivor. Completely. Oh. Poor little guy. I got a good view coming in. It's Jason likes the, in the of rocket launcher that hones in on things. Like what, in the game, the pelican that took 15 minutes to get there? <laughs> if I was a megalomaniac, and I'm not. <laughs> That was a good line. That was a good line. Rob Scott wrote that line. Bugs. Sergeant Stacker. Oh, you gotta give the shotgun passenger a sniper rifle or a rocket launcher or something. Uh, <laughs> That's a. Uh, you know, people are dying all the time, and he's making fun. See, because Johnson during yeah. this level, he was in the Pelican, you see. Yes. With Miranda. There you go. Flying around. No eye in the sky. Not, See, this was one of those things in Halo 2 where all of a sudden Johnson, who was just a Marine that died a thousand times in Halo 1, we made him a cinematic character. And do you remember, Marty, the yes. day that yes. Jason came up to you and me and looked us square in the eye and said, if you're going to make Johnson a cinematic character, that's fine. But I will kill you both if you don't replace him with Watch as good a voice actor as Scully to run around with you all the time. Yeah. Wait, did we ever do that? I forget. No, because I don't. <laughs> I know we're still alive. I don't understand why you mentioned that because he's now going to kill us. <laughs> I think the time is right that I now kill you. <laughs> oh, Marty, oh, you've got to talk about the singing. Singing prophet. The prophet of Listen to what he's singing. He's singing the Halo Monk melody. I shall light this and apparently, when you translate what he's doing, it's just actually talking instead of singing. Pretty much. I'm not sure I quite understand that, but that's okay. <laughs> Why are you the doubting Thomas tonight? <laughs> oh, the magic index. I've located the library. Watch the magic index from game to game. Yes. That index. Mm -hmm. The magic MacGuffin that can be pocketed and tossed this way and that way. Some nice video effect on that. We could actually do video effect in the game. We just <laughs> couldn't do it in the game. <laughs> but I just saw it there. I'm, I'm sure it was in the game. And finally, uh, just like in Member in Halo 1, we had that mission where you were going to go in and, and assassinate the Prophet. And here it is. This is in Halo 2. Halo 2. And here we have some nice, great moving, big pieces big of geometry. Big chunks of moving stuff. Well, some interesting limp body physics. <laughs> Thing is, Jones just doesn't give up on a good idea. Don't kill the prophet in one game, you kill him in the next. That's the largest covenant fleet I've Don't ever seen. Don't get 
the bomb arc weld to your armor in one yes. game and do it in the next. Uh oh. Get inside the temple and kill regret before it can stop us. Oof. <laughs> See now notice how that music played right through the end of the cinematic into the beginning of the thing. See, this is what makes <laughs> right, right in his area. Cool. <laughs> Notice how that grenade <laughs> went right on his business. Poor grunts. Oh, there was there was nothing more fun than plasma pistol battle rifling the elite honor guard. Interrupt my sermon. Uh, actually, maybe jumping on his there throne and him beating him down. Maybe that was more fun. <laughs> That's cool. The the prophet's little hover chairs have giant guns on them. Well, I mean, wouldn't you have giant guns on them in the world where I was a, a half metric man. ton cyborg was oh, about to? And the way you kill him, oh, I see, is you punch him, <laughs> bludgeon, bludgeon him to death. <laughs> That's great. Okay, I'm uh, going to grab that gun now because oh, I no, you can't. can't. All right. <laughs> Now, of course, where do you run? Where do you run if a giant alien spaceship is about to toast you? I don't know. You run backwards, off, See, off the back. When I jumped down that ledge in the game, I always died. Well, here is here is <laughs> Marty. Do you, do you turn into a big whiner after 10 p.m. in the evening <laughs> instead of a pumpkin? <laughs> and this is where we cut the second level in Halo 2, called. Oh, I don't Great remember. Mind. Forerunner Tank. Oh, Forerunner oh, Tank. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's Forerunner Tank. Forerunner Tank. And the greatest thing about Forerunner Tank is that Jones, for a year, we had this level on the whiteboard. Yes. And I would ask him, and Paul would ask him, and whoever would ask him, say, Jones, so what is a Forerunner Tank, and what does it do? And Jones, do you even know what it was supposed to do? <laughs> Describe to me in 30 yeah, words or less now, during this, what like, a Forerunner really tank was season. and what it was supposed to do. Be awesome, blow things up, glow a lot from little windows, move real fast. <laughs> All right, fine. That was less than 30 <laughs> words. <laughs> but the chief was supposed to go on this, I mean, another piece of moving sort of BSP geometry, right? And then... Awesomeness would ensue. Yes. And you would really be introduced to the grave mine because his big tentacles would come crashing down upon you and you would basically sort of be going through the... Not the oh, yeah. bowels, but the caverns of the grave mind, and he would be introducing himself with big pieces of geometry, tentacles that would slam down in front of you, cut off pathways. Oh, yeah. You know, Jason's re revealing all his innermost secrets of how to design great games. Awesomeness would ensue. That's all he has to say, and that's game design. Now I get it. I just have to get you guys off my back so I can do my work. <laughs> This exchange of hats. I love that line. <laughs> it's coming up. What's up? What's up? <laughs> like that little moment between the two of them. It's mm -hmm. good stuff. No. Poor Arbiter. Truth. He's so world weary. He's got the weight of the whole covenant on his shoulders. Yes. And I think one of the one of the tactical okay. errors we might have made, exchange Marty. Exchange of hats. What? Hmm? Is 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 in the world where we wanted to convince people that Truth wasn't the worst guy <laughs> in the world. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how, how in the world was that ever something we thought would actually happen? Don't get me wrong, Michael Wincott, genius performance. Yes, but, but in the world make where you feel like he was going to be possibly be your friend. <laughs> Again, I maintain that if the heretic leader had been a hunter, problem solved. <laughs> And I'm allowed to get away with that statement for the same reason you're allowed to get away with. Forerunner tank, awesomeness would ensue. <laughs> Forerunner tank would have been an incredible level. <laughs> I believe it. It's a tank. It's a tank. It glows. I like the little halo holograms on their headdress. Mm-hmm. And I, I mean, a, in Halo 1, if we had actually made the prophet an elite with a funny hat how tragic would that would that have been because here we have a yeah because now we really get to, great looking right. character have been stuck with that <laughs> the great johnny well apparently we lost all the assault rifles between halo one and halo two so i think we probably could have <laughs> transformed the prophet <laughs> and the pistols <laughs> and the pistols disappeared there's a covenant sabotage expedition to take away the human pistol because it was just too good. <laughs> and here, I think a book, a book is coming out about that. Yes. 
here, here what we're starting to do, right? We're building some momentum. The, Ooh, the strand of the chief story and the, I know, the strand of the arbor's tail, they're starting to come together. Who yeah. was that guy that killed the prophet of regrets? It's coming together. Gotcha. Building to a head. Keep oh, that in mind. I'm following it. Uh-oh. Thank God that this weapon was powerful enough to every single time shoot that thing's arm off because that was one of those little serendipitous things that that was not a custom animation, just blew that sucker's arm right off. And I, I gotta like say, these, what probably like one of the little few guys, times little... in Halo 2 that you actually see the ring. Now, are these guys sort of reminiscent of the marathon dudes that float around and fire at you? What are those things called? Defense Mad drones. defense drones. Marathon automated defense drone, M-A-D-D. -D. Um, no. Oh. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> but the Sentinels are. God damn, there were some just beautiful, drop dead, gorgeous moments in, mm -hmm. in Halo 2. I mean, that I, that I. I don't know, sometimes we get down on Halo 2, but there's some beautiful, beautiful stuff that the guys did. Oh, well, Kill and Flood with a sword, pretty fun. Totally. Although, nothing really beat being locked in a room with Guilty Spark. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that shot. Nice Bolton. shot, Joe. I like that. Or was that me? <laughs> no, I don't remember. Did you shoot that one? What, on the, the just doing this running through playback? Yeah, thing? yeah. Not quite sure. Ah, uh, yes. The Sentinel Factory. How many people know that's a Sentinel Factory, I wonder? I Being blown up and then crashing and then you get into it later on. <laughs> Why aren't you looking at it? Who, who's this? <laughs> And this was the original, um, again, redone a lot, but the Alpha Moon, Alpha Moon sort of oh, yeah, yeah. geometry. The original first level, second level, there's first no service level. Yep. Whoops. Oh. Cut into the heart <laughs> first <laughs> arbiter level. I didn't say that. How many, how many levels did we actually not do, let's say? I think it was 71. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's not ruin the surprise. But what? so far, we've cut a Covenant ship, yes. where you go in and take turret apart from the inside, Forerunner tank, Forerunner tank, which was going to be awesome. <laughs> yeah, I'm awesome like, I, don't, would I don't like the way this is going, Joe. <laughs> so two so far. But I mean, that's what, that's, what, uh, that's what developing is all about. Oh, watch it. Now, did you hear that line? That was delivered as an elite, but it was still by David Scully who also is an elite voice. That's right. That's the case people. Wow, those audio guys are just at the top of their game. <laughs> <laughs> ah, this was so nice. This was some nice stuff in here, Marty. And Jay and Sipo. Absolutely. But the Thanks this was actually, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, Jones, but the this was, I think, some of the ideas that you had for Foreigner Tank, right? I mean, this piece of geometry was, I mean, it wasn't going to look like this, but the because big... it would be a tank. <laughs> but it was the sort of arbiter on one speed. side, master chief on the other, um, both charging for the for the the uh, icon index, right? It was a pale, it's a pale shadow of what foreigner tank was uh, <laughs> going to bring to this world. <laughs> you have no idea what foreigner tank was going to be. Uh, this thing, there's so does. many. This thing was agonizing so many times. You fell through this geometry, got flung off it at a million miles an hour. Like the flood, all jumped onto it and then immediately exploded into a million pieces. <laughs> Targaryen's being a helpful kind of guy. Sure, I trust him. Do you know how hard it was to put sounds on those opening? See, Paul had to work forever because those actual giant opening doors mm. were like in reality like 10 miles away and the sound just would not play in sync because it was the speed of sound would screw it up mm -hmm. that's right hold on to that grave mine tentacle i think someone reused the foley from halo one what but it's the same index thingy uh. <laughs> you know your father never asked me for help either wow johnson's got the lines, my friend. Mackenzie, Perez, it just, well, see, again, you hear me, he loses tentacles all the time. That's just one of the things that happens. One of the things in... It, he sheds them like hair. 
the grave mind was actually a much bigger presence in the original imagining of this game where he was um, I mean, he, his tentacles were sort of seeping out everywhere, and you would see them much earlier on. His yeah. tentacles were kind of racing like freight trains behind half-open doors, things like that. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> You're right, Foreigner Tank would have been awesome. <laughs> Johnson, you all right? Johnson! Miranda's capable? She's got some, got some moves? Boom! No, the uh, the all the all the facial animation in Halo in Halo Two was done in done in scripting, just going in and, and setting um, setting poses and then interpolating between them. But that all got put in the last. That was the last thing I did in Halo Two, and I, mm -hmm. I remember going to Harold, mm -hmm. our new illustrious leader back then, test test Pooba, right. and saying, Harold, just give me just give me twenty four hours, please, so I can go back and put. <laughs> emotion on these guys' faces. Mm -hmm. And uh, Harold, he did it. Just give me 24 hours so I can go back and touch every script I ever wrote in the entire game. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what could have gone wrong? What so, could have gone wrong? It, so now I think we can go to the, we can go back to the bomb thing where the chief's been kind of taking Miranda's orders the whole game and he comes back from one of his little missions with some little trinket he picked up from Miranda and he finds her like in Congress with the prophets in the back of some phantom. And uh, it wasn't just because of her dad in Halo 1, but she chose not to trust the chief what? because because of this, he's going crazy, he's all worried about the ring going off. And, oh, sorry. It was gonna be cool. We I'm reminding this of all line, your sins, the line. there's the line. <laughs> And but, no one knows exactly what that means except Jason. And then, and then it made Relax. perfect sense that not piss this thing off. Miranda and the prophets Thank get together and say, hey, let's send your tin man down with a bomb to take out the grave mine. Oh, that would have been genius. The most genius part was when the chief has the bomb. Jamie's going to kill me for even talking about this. <laughs> I hope he never listens to it. There's no way he'll get this far into the movie. This far into <laughs> you with the bomb, this. like actually, no one's listening to us right now. So <laughs> don't even worry about it. <laughs> In first person, this is a long cinematic. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you with the bomb, arc welded you know, to your back, time. with your with your back to like this there big hole, and a bunch of ODSTs like backing you into the backing into the hole until you jump, and then them throwing like a oh, SMG God. down after you. Time. Oh, that would have been genius. No, I you know, I still never say, quite understood then. The thing which I, I really did like about that cinematic. Shut up, Marty. <laughs> setting aside the Miranda, is the is the sort of moment of, of uh, weakness. The chief getting knocked down and and. Um, oh wait. I, I am the prophet of regret. <laughs> Council of the Spies. Hierarch of the Covenant. A reclaimer. Yeah, he's kind of in a bad way, huh? I I forgot about this part. Yeah, and this is the other. Uh, monitor. I love this. 401 penitent tangent. Oh no! This. This is the this guy from uh, right, right in between. Preceding this cinematic was where Forerunner Tank was going to take place. That's why this is such a long cinematic stretch. Remember, you would fight through Sentinel Wall. Most of the time, the reason this long Arbiter cinematics is because you decided to make them long cinematics. That's what I remember. Well, <laughs> I'm trying to explain. <laughs> Arbiter would be kicked down the hole by Tartarus, right? And then, bam, Forerunner Tank. You'd see the Chief's side of the story. They would meet up at the meet up at the Grave Mine. But when we lost Forerunner Tank, we had this really big, big cinematic, big important cinematic that um, unfortunately could go nowhere, but right next to another big long cinematic. It's not a plant. It's not Audrey. Although I don't know why I keep thinking about Audrey. Well, there was a big a, a discussion where, you know, as as originally designed, the grave mine was this seething mass of corpses, right? He was right. His teeth were skulls, and he talked from the shadows. Um, and when we moved to the world where we wanted him to have lip sync and to actually, Halo is a weapon. Speak. Your prophets are making eh. a big mistake. Your Maybe not the best decision in the world. <laughs> <laughs> but one which, in the world where we didn't have Forerunner Tank to introduce him properly, <laughs> we sort of needed to have the, the moment, the long moment of the Grave Mind introduction. That's a great voice. I mean, come on. D. Baker. And Joe, why does the Grave Mind speak in rhyme? Why did the Grave Mind speak in rhyme? Um, I think he speaks in rhyme because I know that it really made Jason angry. 
It was, it was uh, yeah, it induced such an effect in me. <laughs> well, I mean, inscrutable alien creatures. Often rhyme. Often rhyme. <laughs> Iambic pentameter. Bam! Book! We are all of us gravely concerned. <laughs> Although the effect when you actually see it on the screen is, uh, yeah, much, much better than the way I imagined it happening on the script. The rhyming? Yes. The old get it off the page and up on its feet. There you go. Where it's too late to change it. <laughs> yes. You know, D. Baker did a great job as the Grave Mind voice, I have to say. Uh-oh. Overdubs himself. Oh. You know, when it's hard Harmony to get relief. from one place in the Halo universe to another, Just you know what teleport. you do? You teleport. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> remember how this game originally ended? Oh, don't say. Wait, never mind. <laughs> oh, we'll get there. We have all credit sequences on. Yeah. Do you remember the medallion that the prophet had? Oh, that's right. That was that was the best. That was the best ever. Tell the story. Uh, it's pretty complicated and and really not the best ever, but it was pretty funny. <laughs> I think it might be better than Foreigner Tank. <laughs> no. That prophet, truth. He has the index. You've got to take it from him. Well, we'll have to tell a little bit of it when we get to the, the, the final, final part of, of Halo 2. Truth Good old high charity. Good old high charity. At one point, it was going to be a very brightly lit, sort of happy place, right? It was. Really? Yep. Whoa. There are two groups of Marines cool. All zero their locations. Okay. Oh, there's got to be a detention block. <laughs> but the aliens, they love purple. And I know that Jason, uh, Jason loves purple. purple. Yeah. <laughs> Most of my clothes are purple. <laughs> hey, nice stick. Oh. Well, there's always the point in the game where you got to rescue your friends. We're just lucky this guy didn't get out of his cell and go, hey, while I was in this cell, I heard the Covenant <laughs> talking about something they, they call called Halo, Halo. 2. But you know what? Damn it! Why didn't we put that we in? We should have done that. Genius. What's wrong with you? <laughs> ah, self-referential humor. <laughs> <laughs> Only funny to us. Hmm. What is that thing in the middle of High Charity, Joe? What is that? Is the cool Forerunner looking. ship? There the Forerunner is. Dreadnought. Forerunner ship sounds like the name of a level we should have had. <laughs> hmm. hmm. We'll get there. <laughs> Oh, here it comes. What? Slip space rupture. It's in amber clad. Ah, an okay. amber clad. Up here, make sure you look at it, follow over. Whoa. Oh, nice. Jump up there so we can see it crash. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Goes around the tower. What's going on, Cortana? Man, the Covenant really just... They vacated High Charity. Yeah. Like they got the hell out of Dodge and they realized what was going to happen. And I remember the, the, uh, just these lines that Truth is saying, remember? We, yes. we wrote just like a whack of, I don't know what, 40, 50 sort of one-off lines for the Prophet I think it Truth. was uh, 2000, yeah, but go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't that bad, but actually turned out to be really helpful. Lesson being, Marty, yeah. <laughs> always better to write some cool Absolutely. stuff, record that stuff. Because you and always you find a place to use Always find a place oh, to use yeah, it. Yeah, he loves the fuel rod gun. <laughs> I'm picking up two more transponders. It's the commander and Johnson. They're closing on Truth's position. Oh, can you hear it? They'll need your What's help. that? Oh. Taylor had a cold that day. That's right. <laughs> well, Seriously. Miranda had a cold too in one of these cinematics. I think we've already gone past it. Yeah, no, it was it was Jen who when we came, she came back in for the pickup session at the very last moment and she had a cold and, and we just recorded it that way. Mm. I always hear it, but apparently nobody else does. Do you remember back in the day when um, Johnson and Miranda had a thing? <laughs> what? Don't you remember that? No. Well, I mean, I don't think it got past a, a conversation that's very similar to the one that we're having now. Let's rewind to however many years ago. Hey, Jones, you know what would be really awesome? Yeah. Um, if Miranda and Johnson had a thing. To which I think you replied. <laughs> what? <laughs> and then I got really bitter about that. And so when you came to me and were like, Hey, oh, you know would be awesome? Miranda strapped the bomb on your back. Bomb on his back. I was like, no, it wouldn't. 
The great Chad A. Joseph. Wow, Truth is a colossal jerk. I totally didn't see it coming. Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> He's a bad guy? Oh. Mm, mm, Prophet mm. of Mercy's dead. I just hang on that grind for a little while. <laughs> all, all the prophets are gone now. Marty? Yes? Beautiful piece. Thank you. Mm. Mm, halo -y. Now He teleports too. That's amazing. Well, the Grave Mind sent the two heroes on their own little separate, separate but connected journeys. Mm -hmm. Circling back, people. We're That's circling right. back. They're going to they're meet someday. They are. They're going to join together in a grand third act finale. Just mm. you wait. Would that be like the end of Halo 2? It's true. <laughs> the end of Halo 2. <laughs> And see, if the, if the heretic leader had been a hunter, how sweet would it have been if now in the level where you join back up with the, the hunters, hunters are joining you they up? Come back. Yes, right. Now, I hope we show that yes, where the hunters are actually blood. an ally of yours here. That they must die. Yes. <laughs> Good stuff. Little pods. This level turned out really well. Running around with a bunch of elite buddies with swords who turn invisible Very between cool. encounters. Good. Never times. fails. And you just want to kill the brutes. You can't help it. Juicy targets. Furry. <laughs> yet leathery. How about some piano music? Yes! <laughs> <laughs> Jason's going, piano, what? So Marty, <laughs> so what's your theory for the kids? What's the the, kids. You, when you're looking at, I mean, you know, you score the cinematics, you put the music in, I understand that, but for the kids, when you look at the level, what's your, what's your, what's your, just, how do you approach it? Desperation. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking for just something sort of that'll your eyes and take around you, take the it from point A to point B in the, with the right attitude if possible. Mm -hmm. So. Who could it be? Who could be in this tank? I don't know. What? By the rings, Arbiter. Arbiter. It's By missing the mandible. Of commander. <laughs> the brutes. Vile to slay beasts. That's right. The beginning of this level, the, the cinematic, which we didn't do, because we cut Forerunner tank and had to do the bring him together the grave mine teleport thing, was you would actually witness the brutes, you know, lining up and executing uh, some elite elite counselors the same elite counselors that you saw in the very first cinematic in the game. Okay, now be very, now watch this. I bet you very few people are gonna understand the sound effect that's supposed to happen here. What? Hear the door slam shut? Remember that door slamming shut. Okay. Okay, thanks Joe. <laughs> because at this point we had decided to cut some levels at the end. Yes. And you flipped around some half levels. Right. And there were some continuity questions. And <laughs> Prophet of Murphy's still alive. Murphy Mercy well, is still alive. And so this is the So we're we're, we're catching up now. The Master Chief is almost caught up. It's a forerunner ship. Two heroes yeah. coming together. Yeah. Again. They That's right, we did do the dividing up the levels and, yes, and, and doubling them around. Then you, you tried to like show that no time had passed when we get back to that one moment. And we'll, we'll get to that. But it's very confusing and I'm still confused. <laughs> Mark, you guys, you guys are like talking and I'm just like, well, I'm watching this. I, <laughs> I need to re-engage. <laughs> <laughs> do you know this game? It's Halo 2. <laughs> it's called Halo 2. Oh look. Boom! But, I mean, there definitely was that point, right, where, I mean, I think w uh, one of the saddest things about Halo 2, and there, don't get me wrong, a lot of awesome things as well, but I think toward the end we knew, we knew that we were going to have to make some pretty big cuts, and the, the, p the speed with which we made those cuts, almost as if we, we had a backup plan and knew that it was going to have to happen was, I mean, I'm glad we were efficient, but we were a little bit too efficient. It was, it was... We knew, we knew it might have to be done. The cutting is never happy, and it, yeah, was not. I'll do what I can.
This is some beautiful. I, I love the levels here, though. I mean, this is some great looking stuff. Chris Barrett, right? A mausoleum down below. Oh, there's so many times where that light bridge didn't work and you'd turn it on and run right out and then fall to your death immediately. <laughs> And some of the old Forerunner tank technology, right? We were going to use here, grave my tentacles smashing through the windows. <laughs> like freight trains. Like freight trains. Here you are, back in the inner sanctum of the hierarchs. High Charity, the holy city of the Covenant, mm -hmm. overrun by the Flood. Again, another Halo moment where you need to make a spectacular leap pursued by Endless Flood. Wasn't this going to be a I level? I don't want to go, baby. I don't want to go. Originally, this cinematic, you were supposed to be in a, in a Warthog, and you were going to launch yourself on the Warthog into the, um, into the compartment of the ship. The tube. There goes the right. And again, another uh, another cool idea that we didn't quite get a chance to execute on for right, Halo so 2, but through the truth. Yes. definitely in there for Halo 3. We'd started. A lot of it uh, was Don't working. Don't make a girl a promise. You know you can't keep it. I know. I kind of stepped on that line. Sorry. Mm. Okay, now, meanwhile, let's hear the sound effect. Okay. There. That door closing sound. What is that place? Was that same door closing sound. See, no that time really, has passed. That really brings it all together. See, now we understand that no time has actually passed. <laughs> That's we're right. just picking up where we were. Jason even didn't know that. That was that was your solo attempt to try to fix the way no, that we was just, Joe said, no, just put the door closing sound in again and people will realize that no time has passed. I'm like, uh, I don't think anybody's gonna get that Joe. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that was your idea, Joe. <laughs> well, wait a minute, how come you're blaming that on me? <laughs> Marty. Because that's what you told us to do, and I'm like, what? Even I don't get that no time has passed. But it's alright, it was fun. Well, I mean, let me put it this way. <laughs> it totally makes sense now when we're watching everything when we're watching it only it takes this way, 10 yeah. minutes. <laughs> oh, cutting never fun. <laughs> but hey, at least here we get, let you be friends with hunters. <laughs> this is pretty awesome. Yes. The hunters have come to our aid. Because you remember in Gas Giant when they were the heretics. <laughs> that would have been genius. Oh, no, that doesn't make sense. Yeah, we, yeah, we yeah. are sorry. This mission was really fun. Mm -hmm. This is a blast. You know, this is one of those parts in Halo 2 where I, I wish it had been a lot, a lot longer. Like, this was so much fun, this, this part of the mission, that it was over too soon. Okay, good. Oh, nice. See, how many people even know this whole sequence? Because most people just run out there, they never saw that whole thing. Yeah. And then the hunters are actually in front of you if you spend your time watching, laying back a little bit. Marty, do you remember why we, there used to be a cinematic there, do you remember why we, uh, why we cut it? No, I don't. Well, there used to be a cinematic there where the brutes were actually about to, the soldiers were there yeah. on their knees, and the brutes were going to, to um, well, we have a little, lop off their heads. A little moment there. Lop off their heads, and this yes. was, um, unfortunately, right about that time when real-world events made that made that a little bit too oh, a little bit too real. Ooh, yeah. A little bit too real. It was too politically dangerous. Yeah, it's a little hit a little bit a little bit too hard. So this is where you get to. You actually get to drive the scarab tank through the. Oh no no wait you don't. <laughs> <laughs> like huh? <laughs> I really don't remember very much. <laughs> this is when your buddy Johnson, do it, Johnson, has license to say every awesome line we could come up with. Wow, that banshee's totally screwed. Yeah. Wow. Well, you just barely make it here. This is cool. Whoa. So, Jones, you got to talk a little bit about the boss fights in Halo 2. <laughs> I, I really enjoyed the chair, jumping on the chair and beating the snot out of regret. Mm -hmm. That was that was cool, but it was yeah it was risky. We really didn't know how those were going to turn out. Take the icon in your hands. They're so different. Tartarus is so awesome. Yeah, they're so different from all the rest of the gameplay. You 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 play for 
an hour and a half and then you got to do something completely different yeah. and it's uh yeah not always satisfying but there's a lot of fun in it Stop. that was a sort of a late addition if i remember correctly well, the flags yeah i didn't understand what the, the flags are supposed to indicate some sort of rank or something right it's part of the old sort of uh japanese soldier flag wearing look okay. about them but with covenant technology that makes a breeze blow even if there's not a breeze please <laughs> that's like the, the don't shake the light bulb oh brilliant <laughs> another great line it's almost like scenes between sergeant johnson and guilty spark write themselves <laughs> don't shake the light bulb what are they what are they? I love that. Here we go. Could you once again explain to me how all this works? <laughs> they call it Halo 2. My creators activated the rings. Okay. And all additional sentient life in three radii of the and you, Galactic Center. Three radii of the now, Galactic Center. Did he ever Center. say that line the way that you <laughs> really wanted him to say it? Because I remember we went back and forth on that line for a long that was perfect. <laughs> was that a good read? <laughs> Chunk. Oh, Johnson takes it. The great journey has begun. And the brutes, not the elite, shall be the prophets. Oh, look at that shot. That is a giant hammer. This is all cool. Birthday cake of doom. <laughs> <laughs> Plus we end up like, I think I end up playing like three or four pieces of music simultaneously in this, in this boss battle. And what's cool is the final boss battle of the whole game, of course, is going to come after this with the Master Chief, right? Gosh, I remember, <laughs> I remember jumping off that platform behind those elites so many freaking times. Uh, Johnson helping out, sniping him from the side. Oh, this is cool. Did you go up here? Mm -hmm. This was fun. This, I, I actually think this ended up being kind of fun. I there, was really a, there was a lot of neat stuff in here, but this yeah. was definitely my least favorite of the three really? boss battles. Yeah. Yeah, we tried, we tried so hard, so long. See, I'm, I'm more forgiving, except for the fact that it's... No, I think it's cool. I'm just saying, like... I, no, but I mean, the most, the most amazing thing that we did here, of course, is... That you're ending the game at. I put some emotion on her face right there. The last thing I did in Halo 2 is to make Miranda's face go <gasps> <gasps> right before Harold locked me out of the depot and took away my keys. <laughs> oh, Fink. got it! Right there, she's thinking, "I wish I could. I wish I, wish I could, I could make this have a graphic and disappear like everybody else." <laughs> <sighs> See, we're playing. This, here, this is the Halo mm. 2 monk theme. Right. Oh, it's different than the Halo One monster. It's about to, it's gathering its dark energies, Marty. Yes. And then, Cowboy dissipates. Yep. Here, here we, we go. Are. What you're doing right here, Marty, is you're building. You're building up to something big. What's that? <laughs> oh, here, Johnson riding the. Johnson light bulb. rides his little buddy. You never liked that, did you? <laughs> we had to get him over there. Again, there were some great Easter egg ideas for the variety of ways in which Johnson, on the different difficulty levels, would ride Spark. Should have done it. Who would be on top? Who would be on bottom? Johnson was usually on top. Listen, Tinkerbell, don't make me... Tinkerbell! <laughs> if I had my druthers... Every cinematic would involve Johnson talking to Spark. <laughs> oh, but first Johnson comes in upside down. Hey. Where is it? <gasps> da, 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 da. It's obviously on the last level of the game. Woohoo! I can hardly wait to play this last level. Let's do it. Yep. Here we go. Good. Great. Master Chief, I'm going to play it. Yeah. Isolate that signal. Oh man, this is so exciting. You mind telling me what you're doing on that ship? Sir. Finishing this fight. Damn yes, straight. Q. What? Wait. <laughs> well, this obviously is the news that's leading us into the last level, right? Marty, you seem to still harbor a lot of <laughs> bad feelings about this. <laughs> but the credits channeling the, the fans. Credits aren't infinite. So, Jones, <laughs> walk us through what was supposed to happen right now. Tragically, Jason Jones. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. <laughs> um, yeah. There was supposed to be a whole. Uh, there was supposed to be a whole mission there, Joe. 
I actually think there were supposed to be three missions. Well, there was one important one. <laughs> That's right. But what was going to happen well, is wait, you're going to arrive but, back at Earth. But you, we, we don't want to say what was going to happen because we're not. We, it never did happen, and that's not part of what Halo 3 is. I think so. this is a great example of okay, go ahead. what Bungie does really well, mm -hmm. which is come up with an which awesome is idea. idea. <laughs> which is make stuff up. <laughs> which is come up with a really good idea not execute it on it the first time around <laughs> save it sit on it hone it refine it and then wham next game <laughs> there it is realize it to its fullest potential <laughs> uh, what was that idea <laughs> it would look different with stencil shadows all right <laughs> <laughs> we're done recording wow what a colossal jerk <laughs> wait what, what do you mean that was like uh what like <laughs> putting a stake through the heart of essential shadows and like pushing it out the, into the airlock and venting it into space was like the it's like you that was like the best thing i did it's like you strapped shadow. a bomb to stencil shadows back and welded it and sent it to kill the last level in the game <laughs> <laughs> yeah the whole extra mission there would have uh ended that uh ended that game with a bang mm -hmm. but that was what we had that was what we had to do we did everything we could in the time we had. That's the, um, the funny thing is, is that even though we didn't do that, that sort of finale in Halo 2, that the final cinematic that you're about to see after the credits is the same as it would have, as it would have been. You know, even at the end of Halo 2, we never planned for the Master Chief to, to uh, make good on, his, on his, his promise to Cortana to come back and, and get her. So we were always going to leave the Chief and the Cortana, Cortana part. Well, that could get us into some very sensitive areas, like the Great Grunt Apocalypse. Well, that wasn't so much Jason going in and write, rewriting the grunt lines that, that I recorded, as, as oh, Jason going apocalypse. in and stabbing the two of us in, in the heart. <laughs> oh, God, I no, no, forgot no, no. all that. <laughs> Jason came in Why and we said, we have to fix <laughs> the grunt. Oh, my God. Because we had Dopey Grunt. Oh, he's Dopey Grunt. Well, play me all the, all the permutations in that category, so I would. Yeah, we'll just cut one, two, three, and four. Oh, yeah, no, at five and six, and just cut the whole category. <laughs> and that's how that happened. 2401 <laughs> Penitent Tangent, yes. he came up with that. That's genius. John Michael <laughs> Higgins, he's, he was I think in... you might have peaked. I think, remember, remember, uh, remember 49 <laughs> light bulb? <laughs> and, uh, and, uh... Seven broken iPod? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Those were good. 49 <laughs> light bulb was my favorite thing. <laughs> 49 <laughs> light bulb will rise again. Do you know I have 343 on my license plate? I showed you that, right? What, just out of oh, great. totally random? You just told all the fans your license plate. No, they had they'd a, they'd a stack of plates in the back, and the, the, the nice, the Marty, nice woman. Marty, why you pay the music right here? Right there was the marketing people, so bang, <laughs> music goes down. We love you, Cameron. <laughs> just kidding. Don't let the <laughs> grind you down, Marty. The nice lady at the DMV actually went back to the whole stack of license plates that she had and right. found 343 for me. Huh. I didn't get to choose the three letters. Again, Marty, my favorite piece right here. I mean, by the time people are listening to this, they'll know the answer to this, but what? is this coming back for Halo 3, this piece? Uh, probably, yes. Yeah. I think I, I, because believe it or not, this in the end credits is the only time you hear it this way. Hmm. In Halo 2. You hear a snippet of it in one of the cutscenes, but that's about it. I recognize so many of those testers' names from reading bugs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know one people, from Vincent. A lot of these people are now are like full-time bungees. You had a nemesis in Halo 2, of the bug nemesis. I forgot who it was. Oh, really? I don't know. I don't remember. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't remember, remember a lot. lot. Your, your nemesis who kept designing bugs. I think I was friends with all those guys. Oh, yeah, yeah. I just thought of a couple things I'll have to say after we turn off the mics. <laughs> should say it. Get it out. Get it out now. Uh, actually, I, I'm afraid I can't do that, Marty. Okay. <laughs> but if for as much as we cut stuff from this game, I gotta say that uh, I love I love this little final post-credit sequence. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, as much as we cut stuff from this game, I still love the game. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Amen, brother. <laughs> All right. What does Jason say here? I, uh, I think What's I was again? also Missing doing again? stuff. Oh, yeah, doing stuff. Uh, 
That's all the people talking to their families here. This is so nice. <laughs> Frank, what's... I think somebody, somebody has slipped into a meat-for-dinner coma. <laughs> yeah. Which, Marty, you mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Marcy, Ali, Christy, all in love. Okay, good. But I didn't say last crunch. I, I knew better at this point. <laughs> Clearly, we'll have to keep the mics on after this so we can say some interesting silent. things yeah, that you could put on over the top. Nobody's listening to us at this point. Trust me. Is it over? It's over, of course, Joe. We wouldn't have another cinematic, trademark, we? State no Donald Black. <gasps> oh, this time with no actual, just sound effects. Just sound. And then spoof. This is going to be the last level I've been waiting for. <laughs> and everybody picks their controller. Yeah, up. okay, now I finally get to play. Yeah. A Master Chief back. Yeah, I what? guess that is kind of the downside with post credit cinematics. <laughs> That was, that was classic, Joe. You're, you're right at the end. You're like, you know, but for all we cut, and I, and I thought you were going to say something like positive. But for all we cut, you know, I really, really this, this, I do like this thing that happens after the credits. <laughs> what a <laughs> oh my God. Cool under pressure. Right. Here we go. She's our girl. Shoot. Oh, you got to love her. Oh, wait, this is spooky. This is scary. Huh? Ooh. What will happen? Halo 3. Play Halo 3.